Hey, Magic fans, welcome back to Captain Clyde's D&D &D &D news. Wait a minute, who made this slide? Damn it, who's working in here? Well, that's right, guys. Uh, for once, uh, there's not a whole lot of Magic the Gathering news. So, as an avid gamer, I wanted to cover a little something on D&D, &D, which actually is Magic the Gathering related. However, most of the segment's going to be on D&D. &D. It'll be a quick 10 minute -er. We'll get it out of our system, and we'll move right along to tomorrow. So before I get started, remember to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Throw me some comments down below about what you think about the videos or my thoughts or insights inside those videos. We can have a little bit of talk. Feed that YouTube algorithm so we can raise the number of views up on the channel. That way we can get more people exposed. Tell your friends. Tell your family. I appreciate any support. And as always, link to the eBay store is in the description. You can go buy those cards that you see me opening on all my box opening videos on eBay, pack fresh, just like they come out of the box from the video. So, with that said, let's talk a little bit about D&D, &D, and I guess magic since we have to. So, first thing we'll talk about is this little uh, fun thing. So, the Strixhaven campaign for the D&D &D is now been spoiled so it's going to be called here it looks like strict saving curriculum of chaos uh it's a long line of crossover settings so it is magic based but it is going to be a DD setting much like the other things that we had uh from um oh goodness i've got my uh stuff in my head mixed up anyway so the series began with zendikar you know um we also looks like we had a plane ship innistrad amaket kaladash and ixlon uh, all of which remain free to download. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we started publishing, uh, and they started charging for this. Ra Ravnica. That's the R word I was looking for, and I'll tell you why in a minute why I couldn't get that. Uh, but yeah, Ravnica was the first book that came out as a payable crossover uh, to download an actual um, campaign setting, much like uh, Forgotten Realms, which is one of my favorites. Uh, speaking of Forgotten Realms, don't forget, guys, the D&D &D set comes out after Modern Horizons. Going to have some box opening videos on that. Can't wait. I'm stoked. God, I can't wait for the spoilers, the ones we have got. I've already done some videos on. Go check those out. Um, so on flavor. So in love. God, I want to play some D&D. &D. So with that said, we got all this new stuff coming. Uh, and I, I hate to spoil the surprise or everything, but with the whole get woke scenario where they started going through D&D &D and changing everybody's stats because orcs are supposed to be resemble a race of humans and this, that, and the other silliness, which is just complete absurdity. Oh, for the love of God. Um, it almost makes 5th edition or the new printing of the books very undesirable to me only because D&D &D is just D&D. &D. It's a fantasy setting about creatures, mans, and myths. And monsters, and none of it is supposed to relate to anybody. And if you think it does, then you just need more attention uh, than the normal person. And obviously, you didn't get enough hugging as a child because you need more attention now as you once you've grown up. Uh, because you've realized that, you know, those participation trophies don't really exist in life. But anyway, moving right along. So I am excited about this. Uh, I really like the Strixhaven uh, setting for the card game. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I know it was a Harry Potter ripoff for the most part. But everything's a ripoff anymore. It's very, very rare people get original ideas. But the Strixhaven School itself, the set, the things they did with it, I liked it a lot. Uh, it was pretty cool. Um, I mean, some of that's probably because Liliana was in there and all of hers and Walker. But anyway, it was a great setting. So with all that said, it's very nice. We look forward to the book coming out. Uh, and maybe I will pick up a D&D game here or there now that you know we can actually see people in flesh and blood. Um Oh, is that another game? No, never mind. Uh, we can actually see people in person uh, to actually play D&D. &D. So, moving on to the next D&D &D announcement, and this is why I had trouble with that R word, uh, but it is one of my favorite D&D &D settings, Ravenloft. I love Ravenloft. I've got, I've got a heart on something fierce for this <laughs> campaign setting, and I, don't even, I couldn't even tell you why. Uh, I, I really think the reason is because there's vampires and werewolves, and I'm really into that kind of dark setting, you know, just the whole with the mist and the veil and how you have to teleport with the dark lords, basically. I forget what they really call them, but how all the monsters like, you know, Strahd and all that have their own basic area or plane inside there that's unique to themselves and how it all works. Now, mind you, too, 
The last time I was really big into the Ravenloft setting was in second edition. God, I'm telling my age there. Um, but I love second edition a lot. I love Ravenloft. I like the setting. I love what it is. I love the kind of horror thrill to it. I just, I think it's great. And now you have Van Richen's Guide to Ravenloft, which is basically a campaign source book for Ravenloft. Uh, you know, back in second edition, I had all the Van Richen books. You know, if you, you know, if you go on the Wayback Machine with me, when there was just a bunch of little bitty books, like half that size, and there was four of them. Oh, so great. One of these days, I'm about to dig these books out and take a picture for you guys. I got them all stuck away somewhere. Um, but I'm really excited about this campaign setting. I'm probably definitely going to go check it out. Um, just because, like I said, I do love to play some D&D again. And I love Ravenloft. I love Forgotten Realms, my two favorite settings. Not real big on the rest of them. I am happy to see this. Although, which the way, the, the direction D&D is moving as far as how they're doing their books and how they label things, like what it work really is, uh, kind of is not making me happy. So I really have kind of been out of the loop for a while. So, sorry about that, guys. But, with all that said, this is the most recent news. Uh, really, the only thing that's really come out lately, not anything too great. Uh, now, with that said, I do have some sweet news. Uh, for those of you looking for a pre-release tournament, uh, I don't know if you guys have had the same problem I had, but actually, I had trouble getting a pre-release tournament because people kept telling me and all the local LGSs around me, they didn't know when they was, how much they were going to charge for them. Uh, most of my local LGSs wouldn't even tell me box prices because they didn't know how many boxes they were going to get or what they were going to charge for them, uh, which basically kind of goes back to the whole video about how Modern Horizons is overpriced and everybody's jacking the price up trying to get money out of people, yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to go with Matt Rand again because I'm, I mean, I'm not over it, but I'm sure you guys are overhearing about it. Um, but with that said, you know, only three days from pre-release on Friday, the stores have finally in my area... Um, announced what the pre-release will be and when it is so with that said i have booked uh three pre-releases this weekend uh to attend uh i'm gonna try real hard to do the one on so i, I booked a friday saturday and a sunday um i will video my pre-release box opening at the pre-release uh all three days and post it online so you can see the pre-release kits get open because uh, i think these kits even though not everybody's going to have a pre-release tournament um i want to do is uh, show you guys since this product is kind of hard to get and the pre-release kits will have they'll have dice and they'll have a special foil card with set having such good stuff in it um, I want to show you what those pre-release kits look like because uh, I've already bought I can only get one extra um, so far uh, I'm actually gonna probably check my local LGS to see if I can buy extra pre-release kits when the, when the, uh, the pre-release is over um, I think the pre-release kits might be a real good deal for something to put back um, because, for example, where I'm playing, you know, it's six packs in the pre-release kit plus the foil, and it's $50. So, that's a pretty good price considering, like, regular draft boosters are going for, like, seven, eight bucks. You know, there's six in there. That's right at 50. Uh, but that also includes prizes. So, if I actually do good, I'll win some prizes, and I'll open those prizes on here, too. Because I'm sure as heck ain't going to hold individual packs of this Modern Horizon stuff. It's worth too much money. I'd rather just hold, hold, hold a closed box. Uh, but I think it'd be nice to actually show you guys what I get in the pre-release kits and kind of maybe go over a video about is it if you have an option to pick up pre-release kits, is it worth it? Because I know people ask that a lot and you'll see other big vendors and collectors like go and buy out big hordes of pre-release kits. Um, and a lot of that happened here in the last couple, last over the last year because we couldn't do pre-releases, but they still made the kits because you know they had to make it in advance and it was already planned, yada, yada, yada. And they were talking about how it's going to be worth all this money. Now, most of those pre-release kits I don't think are going to be worth money, per se, unless the set itself was worth money. But with Modern Horizons 2 having fetch lands, you can get a foil. Maybe one of those foils could be a fetch land. You know, like, there could be some serious possibility for these pre-release kits for Modern Horizons 2 to actually be worth a lot of money. I mean, heck, a bundle's running for, like, 100 That's ridiculous. So a pre-release kit with, you know, four or less packs for half the price seems kind of like a deal. Um, especially everything else that might come in it, right? Guaranteed foil and all this other stuff. So I'll film all three of those days. Um, I'll put them up on here. I may have to do a voiceover depending on how noisy the actual LGS is when I open the boxes because it will be during a tournament. Um, so I won't have a whole lot of time to thumb through them slowly. I may have to give you a quick walkthrough as we do it. Um, but with that said, just want to let you guys know that. And also, like I said, I, I booked myself for three. 
I'll see if I do all three because I got to work Monday morning and one of them's a Sunday at 6 p.m. And if you've played a pre-release or a sealed tournament, woo, that's really rough, especially at 6 p.m. when you got to be up at 6 a.m. the next day. So we'll we'll see how that goes, and I'll keep you guys up to date on that. So with all that said, guys, I do appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by today. Uh, hopefully I can find something to talk about tomorrow, and if not, I'll make something up. So until next time, guys, remember, pre-release this weekend. I'll see you guys there. Let's have a good, fun time with our friends and family, and get down your local LGS, help support them, and remember, this is your captain speaking, and until next time, be kind. I'll see you guys at the game tables this weekend.